I'm so distracted by the camera. Um, my name's Clarita. This is the Design Freaks podcast. Looking right at you. It's weird. Uh, and then I'm looking at myself, which is even weirder. Um, I'm here to talk about music industry, art, and design. It's the Design Freaks podcast mini episode number one. Boop, boop, boop. Kind of just want to put some fun stuff out there, like really iconic covers. Just pick one album. I don't have to go down a million rabbit holes about every little connection. Um, and everything is like six degrees of joy division. I mean, there are so many connections to everything. It's unbelievable. I'm figuring out. So it's hard not to take those rabbit holes, those routes. But for these mini ups, I'm going to give you just let's talk about this one record. It's iconic. It's fun. You know it. You love it. Uh, maybe you don't know a s couple of factoids about it. Uh, might be fun to talk about. So for this first mini ep, I picked uh, an album from the 80s, Grace Jones Night Clubbing. So this is such an iconic record. I've never talked about it yet. And or Jean Paul Gode. Um, and, you know, it's just it's one of the most famous of all time. It's on a bunch of different best album cover lists. So but there's not a whole lot to say. So I thought this was perfect for mini cover. Now, there's a whole lot to say about Grace Jones. And perhaps I'll do an entire episode um, about her aesthetics. Um, but I kind of, I don't really want to focus on John Paul because I don't know. Um, he's a little problematic. Let's get into Night Clubbing. We're Night Clubbing. Okay. So if you haven't seen the, um, album cover or perhaps your vision impaired. I'm going to tell you it is really cool and really creepy. And here's something I didn't know. I mean, creepy in a cool way. <laughs> here's something I didn't know. Um, it's, it is a photo, um, but it's a painted photo. And everywhere I see credits for this record, um, that cover is listed as a painted photo. Um, so Jean-Paul Go Good was, um, He's known for manipulating photography, video, et cetera. Everything's manipulated. He considers himself a graphic artist, a graphic artist for that reason. And um, this album cover is definitely no exception. So here's Grace looking fierce and, and just really cool and mysterious. Uh, she's wearing an Armani suit and the shoulder pads are something else. They are, it looks like, you know, it makes her look like a Picasso, just really angular. And that paired with um, her iconic haircut, the flat top. Anyway, there's like a mustard yellow background and then like super on top, super tracked out, sans serif. It is a skinny typeface and it is very tracked out and says Grace Jones slash night clubbing. Um, there's a bunch of covers on this record. Um, and see, this is where it's hard for me to only stick to the album at hand because uh, when I speak of Grace Jones and covers, I want to tell you that she was the first one to ever cover a Joy Division song um, with her from her album previous to this one called Warm Leatherette. She covered She's Lost Control by Joy Division. Deb Reggae. Deb. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie, Debbie Reggae, um, dub reggae uh, sort of version of and kind of an unhinged version of She's Lost Control, uh, which makes me really happy. And in fact, that song she uh, recorded Wally and Curtis was still alive. So, yeah, maybe I should all explain the album cover Um Again, in these mini apps, I can't really go over everything. I'm assuming you know a little bit about Grace Jones, um, experimental artist and musician. Look her up. She's amazing. She was just on tour recently. I did not go, but I loved all the videos and photos I saw. Absolutely incredible. Um, okay, so let me t talk a little bit about the painted photo. So this is a 1981 record. Um, it's a painted photograph titled Blue Black in Black on Brown. <laughs> it's 
created in New York by John Paul. A little bit about the album packaging itself. Um, apparently, it was concealed in a plain black inner sleeve, no lyrics, uh, no photo on the back cover. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's just a bunch of the photo itself, a bunch of right angles. Uh, bare-chested, dressed in Armani man's wide-shouldered suit, sort of tapered at the waist, so very extreme-looking, um, with an unlit cigarette aiming downward from her lip. Um, I saw in one article it saying it looks like the, like the ultimate smoking advert, but she's not smoking. It's not lit. So, Someone wrote, for Uncut, wrote, uh, he felt the cover was arresting and wrote the indigo mood, cool gaze, and cigarettes suggested Marlene Dietrich, the gender bending, a touch of Bowie. Everyone compared uh, Grace Jones to David Bowie back then. D a writer for DIY called it one of the greatest album covers of all time, which I agree with. And then, but he uses the term uh, smoldering noir bisexuality, which. <laughs> not sure how I feel about, but um, smoldering, yes. <laughs> I will agree with smoldering. Um, anyway, also, it's been listed as one of the sexiest album covers of all time, and it was on display in Jean Paul's So Far So Good, G-O-U-D-E, get it, exhibition, which focused on the French artist. Every, if you've heard my show before, you know I love a parody. And part of the joy of revisiting all these cover uh, album covers and the artists themselves is seeing how out of their grasp what they've created got. Like these works of art and these designs just kind of went into a stratosphere of their own and kind of <laughs> had a life of their own through parody. And if you look um, online, there's so many like Etsy uh, poster prints, framed, you know, like someone did one to look like a Nagel painting. There's all different versions of this, like probably a macaroni version. And um, the one of my favorites is, but it's like an actual photo shoot, uh, Tyler, the creator, parodied the photo, I mean, and it looks pretty close. Um, his cigarette is backwards, which is really funny. And uh, the look on his face is priceless. So I will put that up too. I'll put them side by side. Um, but yeah, amazing, iconic Grace Jones. That's a little bit behind night clubbing. Uh, you know, that's one of the, the songs. There's a bunch of covers on it, some originals. Check it out if you haven't. Check out ruinousmedia.com for more music-related podcasts. Thanks for listening. Bye.